Hey everyone, and welcome to What Did I Miss? The third season of Star Trek Picard has brought back one of the more dangerous villains ever to appear on Star Trek, those being the mysterious Changelings, whose evil machinations led eventually to all-out war in the Alpha Quadrant after thousands of years of plotting their revenge. But what led these beings to this point is actually a tragic tale that many fans are not aware of, especially if you are not a die-hard enthusiast of the series Deep Space Nine like I happen to be. So here I thought I would take a look at the story of this rather enigmatic alien race known as the Changelings, and how their plight created one of the most dangerous forces in the known universe. In the canon of Star Trek, the Changelings are one of the oldest known alien races in any galaxy. Their true form is that of a liquid state that most closely resembles the chemical element Mercury. In this form, they can exist as a single being, but can also allow themselves to be enveloped by another Changeling or the combined mass of a larger group of Changelings. When a Changeling undergoes the latter transformation, which is colloquially known as entering the Great Link, their individual form is indistinguishable from the rest of the population within the Great Link. The character known as the female Changeling, who was played brilliantly by actress Salome Jens on Deep Space Nine, explains this metamorphosis in the episode titled Behind Enemy Lines. The drop becomes the ocean. And if you choose to take solid form again, the ocean becomes a drop. Because of this, Changelings do not find the need for the use of a name necessary, which is why each Changeling that has been shown on screen so far, such as Odo and the female Changeling, have been named by other humanoids. Within the Great Link, their combined consciousness could be seen as a hive mind, since they are able to communicate and share memories there, but once they leave the Link, their consciousness is separated from the rest. The female Changeling explains to Odo that thousands of years ago, the Changelings were a spacefaring race of explorers in the Gamma Quadrant who sought to better themselves and the new cultures they encountered through shared knowledge and experience. However, at some point around 2,000 years before the events of Deep Space Nine, humanoids began hunting and subjugating changelings because of their ability to mimic objects and other humanoids, repeating the cycle of human frailty that comes from fearing what you do not understand. While it does take practice, changelings have the ability to perfectly recreate the bodily structure and features of almost any object or living being. This transformation is not limited by the size or mass of the object, as over the course of Deep Space Nine, we see various changelings take on the form of a bird, a small bag, a mist that covers the entire promenade of DS9, and a pad device, just to name a few, not to mention the many characters that changelings have mimicked as well, such as General Martok and Dr. Bashir. The humanoid form that Odo resembles is based on his own assimilation of the appearance of the Bajoran doctor that studied him when he was found. The term changeling was first used by the humanoids that had hunted them, and even after these humanoids were no longer a threat to the changelings, they continued to allow the use of the term to describe them out of defiance. Coincidentally, Odo roughly translates to unknown sample in the Bajoran language, and the character Odo continued to use this as his name as a reminder of his time spent as a sample in a lab. Even though changelings can appear as anything, they are limited by the time they can spend in solid form as every 16 to 18 hours, a changeling must revert to its natural form, although it is never made clear how long they must stay like this before they can take on another shape. Preventing a changeling from reverting to their natural form can cause them to experience extreme pain and distress similar to torture. After being hunted for many years, the surviving changelings hid on a rogue planet in the Omarian Nebula, which made it difficult for them to be found. Over time, their hatred for humanoids, or solids, led them to believe that they had to do something to bring order to a chaotic universe. To ensure that they would never be at the mercy of another race again, the Changelings became the founders of the Dominion. Their first act was to send a hundred infant Changelings out into the universe and genetically code them to return to the Great Link by the 27th century. The purpose of this was to learn more about their enemies in the galaxy without having to leave the Great Link. Odo, a main character on Deep Space Nine and played by René Aubergenois, was one of these children and thanks to the Bajoran wormhole, he found himself in the Alpha Quadrant. Another one of these changelings, who took on the name Laz, also found his way eventually to Deep Space Nine. Although he was found on a different planet hundreds of years prior to meeting Odo, Laz developed a similar animosity towards solids due to his own experience. It should be noted that when Odo was first discovered, he was also abused by the Bajorans that had found him who treated him more like a scientific abnormality than an individual constantly probing and studying him. Even so, Odo did not develop the same feelings towards humanoid lifeforms that Laz and the Founders did, but instead directed those feelings toward the doctor who mistreated him, showing that if nothing else, that when changelings do assume a singular form, they each have their own motivations and personality. 
Soon after sending their children out into the wilderness of space, the founders also created the Jem Hadar, a race of beings built for battle who became the brutal guardians of the Dominion along with its infantry during combat. The Jem Hadar were bred in birthing chambers and given an accelerated growth cycle so that they could reach maturity in a mere three days after first gestating. Their intelligence was also altered so that they could understand language within a day of their birth along with a predisposition of unflinching allegiance to the founders. In order to exert even more control over these living war machines, the founders also created within them a dependence on a narcotic known as Ketracel White, which was the Jem'Hadar's sole source of nourishment, as they did not eat nor did they require sleep. Without a consistent supply of the drug, the Jem'Hadar would eventually experience the symptoms of withdrawal and become so weak that they would perish. Although there was one Jem'Hadar that was somehow able to survive without the need of Ketracel White, so perhaps in time, they would be able to evolve past this limitation built into their biology. Along with the Jem'Hadar, the founders also allowed a race of beings known as the Vorta to be part of the Dominion structure. If the Jem'Hadar are to be considered the soldiers of the Dominion, the Vorta are the politicians and generals of their combined forces. The Vorta were granted this honor because many years before the formation of the Dominion, a group of Vorta allowed a changeling to hide while it was being hunted. At the time, the Vorta were small, timid, ape-like forest dwellers that lived in hollowed out trees. When the founders grew in power, they did not forget this act of bravery from these small creatures and in turn genetically altered them to become the humanoids we see on Deep Space Nine. Much like the Jem'Hadar, the Vorta are also born with a genetic disposition to love and protect the founders. Also like the Jem'Hadar, the Vorta are created through artificial means and are cloned whenever one dies or is killed. There was one Vorta that appeared to have telekinetic abilities, but since it turned out that the founders staged the event where she displayed this ability and no other Vorta ever showed the ability, it is possible that that was a ruse. With the Vorta and the Jem'Hadar as the face of the Dominion, the founders were able to take over most of the Gamma Quadrant by the 24th century. The founders were also known to use chemical warfare on enemies, which is what the unfortunate residents of a planet known as Teplan learned. After these people resisted the Dominion, the Jem'Hadar introduced a disease known as the Blight into their population. This disease not only affected the living members of the planet, but would also infect any infant born into the population. The founders seemed to be content with their rule over the Gamma Quadrant, but this was interrupted by the Federation and the existence of a stable wormhole that linked to the Alpha Quadrant. After this anomaly was discovered, the Federation along with many other cultures in the Alpha Quadrant, such as the Bajorans and the Ferengi, sent envoys through the wormhole for various purposes. While the Federation's goal was to explore this undocumented area of space, the Bajoran people created new colonies on planets close to the wormhole while the Ferengi sought to create economic opportunities for themselves. These incursions into their space did not go unnoticed by the Founders, and throughout the first two seasons of Deep Space Nine, we start to learn of the Dominion and how they are feared by everyone who has come into contact with them. This comes to a head when Commander Sisko, along with his son Jake, his son's friend Nog, and Nog's uncle Quark are caught on the wrong side of the wormhole in the Gamma Quadrant and captured by the Dominion. It is at this point that the Dominion reveal themselves to the Federation as just one Jem Hadar is able to beam directly onto Deep Space Nine and is unaffected by the station's security measures or force fields. Ignoring the warning made by this Jem Hadar, Starfleet sends a force into the Gamma Quadrant to retrieve Sisko and company, which they are able to do but at great cost. These events begin what will be known later as the Dominion War. Soon after this, Odo and a crew from Deep Space Nine are brought to the home planet of the Founders in the Omarian Nebula. It is there that Odo first encounters the Great Link and his people and learns about them through his interactions with the female Changeling. It is important to note that Odo, while he does consider himself a Changeling, does not consider himself a Founder. The distinction between the two being that since Odo had not experienced the Great Link and was not part of their plans with the Dominion, he was not truly a Founder. Even still, the Vorta and the Jem'Hadar that Odo comes into contact with throughout Deep Space Nine do revere him as a Founder. When the Founders learn about Odo, it is obvious that having him return to the Great Link is a priority for them, and at one point, the female Changeling states that she wants that more than anything else. Throughout the Dominion War, the Founders use misdirection and subterfuge along with the brute force of the Jem'Hadar to weaken the forces of the Alpha Quadrant. They infiltrate not just Starfleet, but also high positions in the Klingon and Romulan militaries. If not for the timely involvement of the aliens that live in the wormhole, who the Bajoran people see as prophets, the Dominion would have conquered the Alpha Quadrant. But they are ultimately defeated with not only the help of the prophets, but are driven back by the combined forces of the Alpha Quadrant as well. Finally, Odo is able to convince the female Changeling to call back the remaining forces of the Dominion, which ends the conflict. In the aftermath, the female Changeling agrees to the Treaty of Bajor, which requires her to surrender herself to Federation authorities 
and also requires the withdrawal of all Dominion forces from the Alpha Quadrant. In the late stages of the Dominion War, a virus was created that only affected changelings by a group known as Section 31. If you are not familiar with Section 31, they are a paramilitary organization that is not officially a part of Starfleet, but works alongside them to better their interests. Unbeknownst to Odo, he was given the disease by Section 31 and became a carrier that ended up infecting the Great Link and all founders including the female changeling. While this was an effective weapon against the founders, many Starfleet officers upon learning of this tactic denounced it and the disease was cured by a doctor working for Starfleet, Dr. Bashir. As part of the armistice, Odo after receiving the cure was able to heal the female changeling and eventually the Great Link as well after he returned to it. Since the end of Deep Space Nine, there has been hardly any mention of the changelings Although the series Star Trek Discovery did mention a fourth founder's planet on a star chart, showing that this ancient race of beings has endured into the 32nd century. Well, this is the story of the Changelings aka the Founders, but let me know in the comments if I missed anything. I obviously could not cover the entirety of the Dominion War in a short video, and if you want to know more, I encourage you to watch the series Deep Space Nine, because I think that not only is it a great show and an essential part of the history of Star Trek, but it also holds up much better than other examples from that time period. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please remember to hit that like button if you have enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time on What Did I Miss?